It's one scene one overview for Macbeth. Um, so I am in student view on actively learn and I'm going to be doing some notes over here uh, in the side view. So if you have completed this assignment and you were struggling with it a little bit, which some of you said it was a bit tricky, which I understand, um, or if you are one of those people that has not completed your assignment yet, you might want to open that up so you can follow along. So the very beginning of the play opens with witches, which makes perfect sense given what you guys learned about King James and his somewhat creepy obsession with witches and witchcraft and demons and all things supernatural. Um, so those are the class results for this particular section. Little, basically about half. So you'll notice that scene one opens with thunder and lightning and three witches. Now it's important to know that Shakespeare, as you guys know, writes a lot in iambic pentameter, which is what our sonnets were written in. Um, and if you take a look over here in the notes in the margin, you'll see I have a very famous line from Romeo and Juliet broken down for you in that iambic pentameter, but soft what light through yonder window breaks. Um, iams, an iambic meter, is meant to mimic the human heartbeat. Well, that's why you get that ba dum ba dum ba dum ba dum ba dum feeling. But the witches in Macbeth and supernatural characters in a lot of plays written in this time period um, speak in what's known as trochaic meter, which is basically just the complete opposite of iambic meter. So instead of ba dum ba dum, it's bump 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 bump, and it's meant to make the audience feel uncomfortable. So when they track uh, people's heart rates when they're listening to poetry or songs that are in a particular meter. Um, you'll notice that people do react differently to trochaic meter, even if they don't realize that's what's happening. So the witch's first two lines are written in this sort of opposite of the human heartbeat meter, which makes us know as audience members immediately that these are evil characters. They are not to be trusted. There is something non-human about them. And even in terms of structure, you'll notice the first line is seven syllables and the second line is eight. So there's not even any sort of consistency um, in how it's broken down. So when shall we three meet again in thunder, lightning, or in rain? It's not even, and it doesn't balance itself out particularly well. Another thing you want to keep in mind is that we're working with pathetic fallacy here, which again is when uh, what's happening with the weather is mirroring the emotional context of a character or a scene. Like when you st start out like a horror movie and you know there's thunder and lightning and wind and creepy howling noises and storms going on, that's pathetic fallacy. It's meant to make you as the audience member understand a little bit more clearly what's going on. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. For opening a play like Macbeth, however, the fact that the play opens with a heavy storm and introduces these supernatural characters, it makes sense to us that there is this horrible weather going on. Um, notice we've got three. We've talked about the significance of the number three before with your archetypes, but it's something to keep in mind. The other thing I want you guys to pay attention to in this scene is the use of oxymoronic language, oxymorons, where you have two words together um, that seem like they shouldn't go together. It's almost like a paradox. So in this scene, they're going to talk about things being lost and won, and then they'll be talking about how things are both fair and foul. Basically, things that don't seem like they can happen simultaneously. So let's read through this together. Um, I will not be doing different voices for it. I'm just going to read it straight through for you guys. But I do want you to pay attention to a couple lines, um, and I'll stop and go through what's going on with them. So we start with our first witch. When shall we three meet again in thunder, lightning, or in rain? So there's that reference yet again to the weather element. When the hurly-burly's done, when the battle's lost and won. So there's one of those phrases that doesn't seem to make a lot of sense here. How can you lose and win a battle? But what this tells us about the witches is that they genuinely don't really care how the battle ends. They have no interest in who wins or who loses. Um, they're not particularly interested in which side is right or wrong, uh, but instead they're just saying when it's over. And when the battle is over, one side will lose and one side will win. So it's a very honest statement, but it tells us a lot about their motivation in this scene. The third witch then says that will be air, the set of sun. Um, and if you think back to our archetypes unit, what does the setting sun represent for us? Where the place upon the heath there to meet with Macbeth. And that's when we're introduced to our main character. Knowing that the witches are planning to meet with him um, in the very first scene tells us that things are not going to go very well for that guy. 
Uh, then we meet the familiars. I come Grey Malkin. Grey Malkin's the cat. The second witch says Paddock calls. Paddock is a toad. The third witch just says Anon, which means goodbye. Um, her familiar is usually interpreted as being an owl. And then together, the three witches chant, fair is foul and foul is fair. Hover through the fog and filthy air. And that's similar to that battle being lost in one moment, where how can something be both fair and foul at the same time? How can it be good and bad? How can it be beautiful and ugly? Um, and then the idea of hovering through fog and filthy air, that just adds more of that creepy nature to it. The fact that the witches are able to hover, um, you know, fly through the air, whether it's with brooms or not. Um, but that is where we get that supernatural element at the end as well. So when you're doing your question for this scene, it's just basically a review note, summarize what the witches say during act one, scene one, um, and then you are finished with that scene.